by Vaughan Gallagher, social introductions, ladies and gentlemen of excellent family introduced in an atmosphere of elegance and refinement, object, matrimony. Unfortunately, I won't be able to offer my usual lightning services today as I have a previous engagement in Yonkers, New York, finding a suitable second wife for Mr. Horace Van de Gelder, the well-known unmarried half-millionaire. <laughs> I might also mention that I am available for financial consultation, <coughs> instruction in guitar and mandolin, short distance hauling, and uh, varicose veins are reduced. <laughs> Kemper, the artist. Levi, the train for Yankees is in five minutes, and if we don't get there on time... Oh, but we will, Mr. Kemper. And not only will Horace Van der Gelder give you permission to marry his niece, Ermengarde, but he will also dance at your wedding. And not alone either, for I am busily engaged in finding a suitable second wife for himself. What he really needs is someone steady to clean his house. Oh! As my late husband, Ephraim Levi, always used to say, marriage is a bribe to make a housekeeper think she's a householder. <laughs> I know all about it, Mrs. Levi. Uh -huh. Half New York says he's going to propose to Mrs. Irene Malloy this very afternoon. Which is the very reason I'm going to Yonkers this morning, Mr. Kemper. <laughs> oh, well, 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 what do you know about that? I don't seem to have any money to pay for the train fare with. Only, uh, large bills of fives and sevens. I have some change here somewhere. I only hope this isn't a wild goose chase, Mrs. Lee. Oh, and speaking of... Poultry. I might also mention that I am available for fresh jersey eggs, surgical corsets reboned, ears pierced, and uh, pierced ears <laughs> replugged. Living, Mr. Kemper. Some people paint, some sew. I meddle. <laughs> I have always been a woman <laughs> who arranges things for pleasure and the profit it derives. I have always been a woman <laughs> who arranges things. Love, death, and Yeah, 
like luncheon parties at a pokies and love. Foolishness. 
99% of the people in this world are fools. And the rest of us are in great danger of contamination. <laughs> Why? Even I was young once, which was foolish. And I got married, which was foolish. And I was poor, which was even more foolish than anything else. And my wife died, which was foolish of her. And I grew older, which was sensible of me. And I became rich, friendless, and mean. Which, in youngers, is about as far as you can go. Oh, I know what you're all wondering now. Why a man with so much good sense should plan anything as foolish to get married again. Well, the answer is simple. This house, without a woman, would be an empty shell, and pretty dirty too. It takes a woman all powder and paint to joyously clean out the drain in the sink. And it takes an angel with long golden lashes and soft crispy fingers, her dumb ugly ashes. Yes, it takes a woman, a dainty woman, a sweetheart, a mistress, a wife. Oh, yes, it takes a woman, a fragile woman, to bring you the sweet She wasn't that easy to unload. Oh, by that I mean, you know what people said. <laughs> Although I, for one, never believed the rumors. No, I did not. Rumors? What rumors? Oh, nothing to get upset about, Mr. Vandergilde. By all known facts, her first husband passed on quite naturally. It's just that he went so sudden. A few spoonfuls of that chowder she made for him special and...
advice to you, Mr. Vandergelder. Eat out. Now, hold on, Mrs. Levi. Do you mean to say that Mrs. Malloy... Oh, I mean to say nothing, Mr. Vandergelder. Oh, by the way, she's ordered her wedding gown. You should see it. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Black. Anyway, my congratulations to you both on your forthcoming nuptials, and may you rest in, mm, I mean, may guardian angels watch over you both, particularly at dinner. Now, see here, Mrs. Levi. You introduced me to Mrs. Malloy, and I intend calling on her this afternoon as a rage. Well, then there's nothing else for me to do but return to New York and tell the other girl, the heiress, not to wait. What? What? did you say? Oh, nothing. Uh, a word. Heiress. Oh, particulars, Mrs. Levi. I demand particulars. Her name. <laughs> her name. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, of course, of course, her name. Well, her name is Money. Ernestina Money. Oh, what a love. Hmm. Well, uh, picture if you will, uh, hair as bright and shiny as a newly minted dime, <laughs> eyes as big and round as silver dollars, skin as soft and mossy as an old greenback. Oh, I can feel her now. Age 19. Age 19. Weighed 102 pounds. Weighed 102 pounds. A waist, uh, 47 inches. A waist, 47 in... 47 inches! That's with the money belt. Oh. <laughs> now, I could arrange for you to meet this Ernestina this very afternoon. No, mm, oh, I ain't got time this afternoon. I gotta bring my niece Ermengarde to New York, where she can go and forget a certain Ambrose Pedro. Oh, I could do that for you, Mr. Vandergeld. I'm very good at arranging such matters. Mm, then I gotta march in the 14th Street Parade. What an amazing coincidence. Guess who has been chosen to ride on the main float? The spirit of Wall Street, Miss Money herself. <laughs> Her mother was a cash, you know. All right. I'll meet Miss Money at the end of the parade. But I still intend calling on Mrs. Malloy first. Oh, the races you do make me run. Very well, Mr. Vandergelder. I shall meet you outside Mrs. Malloy's hat shop at 2.30 as usual. But one more thing, Mrs. Lever. Mm -hmm. Suppose I decide against Mrs. Malloy. Then I don't like Miss Money neither. Well, then, I happen to have one more name on my list. A name I know as well as my own, but uh, let's not go into that right now. It'll come up by itself all in its own good time. Don't you worry about that. I think so. It takes a woman to quietly plan To take him and change him to her kind of man And to gently lead him Where fortune can find him And not let him know that The power behind him was that fragile woman that gentle woman, that sweetheart, that mistress, that wife. <laughs> Ephraim, I think I'm going to have that room done over in blue wallpaper. <laughs> yes, in blue. <laughs> oh, Ermengarde. Ambrose, we've got plans to make. Chief Clerk. Oh, promoted from Chief Clerk to Chief Clerk. And in ten years, with a bit of luck, I'll be promoted to Chief Clerk again. I'm 33 and a quarter years old, and I still don't get an evening off a week. 
When am I going to begin to live? Do you remember what happened last Christmas? All those cantometers went bad and exploded, and you and I had to clean up a mess all afternoon. You call that? You call that living? No. Cantometers bad and exploding, and I had to clean up a mess. Please. Bonnie, Bonnie, you and I are going to New York. You mean close the store? Cornelius, we can't. We got him. Some more cantometers are going to explode. Holy cabooses! How do you know? Please, I'll light them under the cantometers. They'll make such a smell the customers won't be able to come to the place for 24 hours. Bonnie, we got to New York and we're going to live. We're gonna have a good meal. We're gonna spend all our money, and we're gonna be arrested. All the cabooses. And one more thing, Barnaby. We're not coming back to Yonkers until we've each kissed the girl. Cornelius, you can't do that. You don't know any girls. Thirty-two and a quarter years old. Gotta begin sometime. I'm only 15 for this. This is so urgent for me. What do you think? New York. Elevated trains. Lights of Broadway. And at Barnum's Museum, the stuffed <coughs> whale. A stuffed whale? A stuffed whale? What do you say, Barnaby? Yes, Cornelius, yes. those candles. Come on. Now the first thing we have to do is make you financially independent. I know I'll find you a job. Can you dance? Miss Levi, I'm an artist. I hate Oh, Mr. Kemper, my God. Mrs. Dolly Levi, artist charge how you dance? Now there's this man, Rudolph Reisenweeber at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant. I want you to take this note to him, and we'll see if he can't have you entered into the polka contest this evening. The polka contest? Oh, the first prize is a week's engagement and a solid gold cup. <gasps> the cups we won, Ephraim and me. <laughs> now, hold on, Miss Levi. No fiancé of mine is going to set foot in a cafe. And I don't mind saying I'm surprised at you for having acquaintances place like that. Oh, not acquaintances, Mr. Kemper. Friends. Very dear friends from days gone by. Oh, my late husband, Ephraim Levi, believed in life in any way you could find it. Cafes, ballrooms, yes, even theaters. Oh, and even when times were bad, every Saturday night, regular as clockwork, down the stairs at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant, we'd come there from and me. It's all very well to come down like clockwork, Mrs. Levi, but you're asking Arden God to work there. Yes. <laughs> It's the only way we can convince Horace Van der Gelder that we mean business. Now, shh! You take this letter, and you say that Mrs. Levi sent you. Oh, and, uh, by the way, tell Rudy Dolly's coming back. Dolly's coming back? But my problem's all right, Cornelius. Now, all the candles are the ones on top. Not too close. They're all swelled up like they're ready to burst. Cabooses! Cornelius, I can smell it from here! Come on, Barnaby, let's get dressed! We're going to New York! Out there, there's a world outside of Yonkers Way out there beyond this hick town, Barnaby There's a slick town, Barnaby
yet, thanks the Lord. Lovely are improving. Now don't you go to pieces. We're seven minutes late. Malloy. 
and I can no longer stand being suspected of being a wicked woman with nothing to show for it. <gasps> Mrs. Malloy! Don't protest, Minnie. All millineretters are suspected of being wicked women. That's why I can't go into restaurants or balls or theaters. That's all the proof they'd need. Take my word for it, Minnie. Either I marry Horace Vandegelder, or I break out of this place like a fire engine. <gasps> oh, no. Not Miss Mortimer again. Miss Mortimer. Oh, I'll take care of it. No, Minnie. Leave it be. You can make another hat for Miss Mortimer if you like. I'm wearing this one myself. Oh, Mrs. Malloy, you can't. You're a widow. And that hat, well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's provocative. That's what. Is it, Minnie? Yeah. Well, who knows who may walk into the shop today. And provocative may be just what I want to be. Oh, Mrs. Malloy. <laughs> Because a breeze might stir a rainbow up behind me that might happen to catch a gentleman's eye. And he might smile and take me by the hand this summer, making me Can be and so I will proudly wear ribbons down my back, shining in my hair that he might notice. my share of love and I'm not saying I was sure changed once is enough for a woman as long as it's true love oh and it was that <sighs> many look there's two men staring at the shop ma'am why I do believe they mean to come in here ma'am in the shop oh mrs. Malloy what shall we do do you why, flirt with him, of course. <laughs> I'll give you the short one. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Malloy, and you with all that talk about love. Love enough, I've had many. It's a bit of adventure I could do with now. 
We'll get them all heated up and then drop them cold. It'll be good practice for married life. <laughs> now come with me into the workroom, Minnie. I know a few ways we can perk up our appearances. Besides, a bit of a wait will only make them nervous and easier for us to... <gasps> if you say vampire, I'll scream. Vampire! Oh, <laughs> oh Minnie, we'll get an adventure out of this yet. We'll get an adventure out of this yet, Barnaby. All day long we walk around the streets of New York and nothing happens. Then we come to the quietest street in the city and suddenly... Vander and Gilder, is he still out there? Go look. <gasps> He's sitting on that bench. Cornelius, are you sure this is an adventure? You don't have to ask, Barnaby. When you're in one, you'll know it all right. How much money have we got left? Not much, Cornelius. 40 cents for the train back, 30 cents for dinner, and 20 cents to see the whale. Why? When those two women come back, we'll have to pretend to be customers. Customers? That's it. We'll make them think we're uh, rich. Uh, that way we won't have to buy anything. <laughs> we're two men about town looking for hats to buy for ladies. Good afternoon, Mrs. Malloy. Here, Cornelius Hackle. Here, Barney Tucker. My pleasure, gentlemen. Now, what can I do for you? Well, you see, we're two ladies about town looking for hats to Malloy. Here, hats, you buy a... Oh, you want to buy a lady or two to Malloy with? We want a hat. For a lady, of course. And everybody said to go to Mrs. Malloy because she's so... Oh, she's so pretty. <laughs> I mean, her, her hats are so pretty. Cornelius, and so reasonable too. As reasonable as under a dollar. Would still leave us enough to see the whale. Oh, don't pay him no mind, Mom. He's come all the way from Yonkers to see the stuffed whale. And he's all excited. Go check the street, Barnaby. Maybe you'll see it pass by. Is it big and black with mean little red eyes? Yes. What is sitting right on that bench? <gasps> Excuse me, but did you say Yonkers, Mr. Hackle? Why, yes, ma'am. Perhaps you'd like to see Yonkers sometime. Oh, by that I mean perhaps Mr. Malloy would like to see Yonkers. Oh, I'm a widow, Mr. Hackle. You are? Barnaby, she's a widow! Oh, that's too bad. I'm sure Mr. Malloy would have enjoyed Yonkers, especially in that hat. I mean, on you, of course not, Mr. Malloy. May his soul rest in peace. Oh, you're a Catholic, are you? Don't let that worry you. I'd be willing to change my... <sighs> Mrs. Malloy, if you should ever have an afternoon free in the near future, I'd be more than willing to show you Yonkers from top to bottom. Well, as a matter of fact, I might be there sooner than you think. This Sunday. You see, I have a friend who lives in Yonkers. You do? Perhaps you know him. Perhaps we do. Oh, it's always so foolish to ask in cases like that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Mr. Vandergelder. Horace Vandergelder. Oh, Vandergelder's hay and feet. Do you know him? No! No! Oh, oh I am so sorry. Uh, Mr. Vandergelder is a very substantial man. And well liked, they tell oh, me. Just lovely, Mr. Just lovely. He only has one fault. He's as hard as nails. Cornelius, I think, I think... Perhaps your friend might like this one. Look out, look out, Mrs. Malloy. Gentlemen, what are you doing? We'll explain later, Mrs. Malloy. Oh, come out of there this minute. We're as innocent as can be, Mrs. Malloy. Well, really, oh. Mr. Hackle, Mr. Tucker, I insist that you come out of there this minute or I'll be forced to call the... <gasps> Mr. Van Gelder! Mrs. Malloy, I don't suppose Mrs. Levi is here, is she? She was supposed to meet me on that bench ten minutes ago. Well, she can just go looking for me if she comes now. When I make an appointment, I expect people to be on time. Here, here's a present for you. Chocolate-covered peanuts. Unshelled. That's the expensive kind. Did I just see you talking with two men in here? Men? Men, Mr. Vandergelder? Now, what would men be doing in a lady's hat shop? Oh, come with me into my workroom. I'm so anxious for you to see it. I saw it last week. Oh, so you did. What's oh, Mr. Vandergelder? It's lovely. Mr. Vandergelder, aren't you? Oh, Mr. Vandergelder, what's new in the hay and feed business? I understand you have three friends, all as hard as nails, I mean. What the devil are you talking about? Yonkers. Oh. I hear it's a very beautiful city. Mm. 
who the devil's been telling you about Yonkers? Um, oh, oh, nobody, a friend. Friend? What friend? Well, you see, he... He? Uh, 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 uh. A customer, Mr. Vandergelder. Someone quite well to do, as a matter of fact. Uh, he was in here buying hats for ladies. You might even know him. Although it's usually so foolish to ask in cases like that. It's a Mr. Cornelius Hackle. Did you say Hackle? Why, yes. Well, he only happens to be my head clerk, that's all. Mrs. Malloy, I demand an explanation. And I'm going to give it to you. Why shouldn't she know Cornelius Hackle? Why, everyone in New York knows Cornelius Hackle. He's seen at the opera at all the fashionable homes. Why, he's even seen at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant three times a week. Impossible. He only has $146.35. And I keep that in my own safe. Oh, Mr. Vandergelder, you are killing me. Why, he's one of the hackers. They uh, built the canal. What canal? Suez. Uh -huh. Both. It ain't the same man. Who took the horses off Jenny Lynn's carriage and pulled her through the streets? None other than Cornelius Hackle. Why, he is the playboy of New York. Now admit it, Irene, darling, you're as taken with him as everyone else oh, Really, darling, I don't know what you're talking about. I only met the man once in That's my life. Enough. Excuse me. Of course. There's a man in there. A man, a man in, in there. there. Now, wait a minute. If there is a man in that closet... Oh, I wouldn't oh. let you, Mr. Vandergilde. It's far too dangerous. No man that hides in a lady's closet can frighten me. Mrs. Levi, stand aside. Oh, no man indeed. Why, you'd make short work of any man. Those muscles. I can see them now rippling underneath your jacket. Ripple, ripple, ripple back and forth. Ripple, ripple, ripple. <laughs> mm, for the last time, Mrs. Levi, will you stand aside? Oh, stand indeed. That is exactly what the court will want to know when you are accused of entering that closet without a search warrant. Oh. I mean, what do you stand for if not for the laws of this great land? Oh. I know what I stand for. I stand for a motherhood, America, and a hot lunch for orphans. Take off your hat, Sir Betsy Ross, the slag is passing. Do you see him on the hill at Gettysburg, neath that great triumphal arch? If you see him as he's marching through the grapes of wrath, stand up and march, march, march. you, sir. I came here an immigrant girl at 14 years of age from a land that oppressed my people. And I must echo here what was said by that great and patriotic American... Uh, Moses? <laughs> I stand for motherhood, America, and a hot lunch for orphans. Take off your hat, sir. There's a tear stain. Passing, do you see him on the bridge at Waterloo? Leave that great triumphal arch. If you hear him singing Dixie in the sugar cane, stand up and march, march, march. I stand for my March, march. Four score and seven years ago. March, march. To form a more perfect union. March, march. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. March, march, march. So you see, Mr. 
Mr. Vandergelder, there couldn't possibly be a man in that closet. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Mrs. Malloy? All right, Mr. Vandergelder. There is a man in that closet. Aha! And another under the table. What the There devils? also happens to be a very simple explanation which for the moment eludes me so for the present good afternoon <laughs> good lord Irene the whole room is simply crawling with men <laughs> I've never seen anything like it congratulations Irene darling I suppose I'll see you later Mr. Vantigelder you certainly will Mrs. Levi with a certain young lady at the end of the parade on the main float good day Mrs. Malloy Mrs. Malloy, I can explain everything I you see. I do not wish to hear any explanations, Mr. Hackle. Just you and Mr. Tucker. Do me the pleasure of leaving my shop, or I send for Officer Gogarty. Oh, well, if you ask me, Irene, sending for an officer is letting them off too lightly. I've been adding up a list of offenses committed by these two, and I say you had grounds for at least two writs, a cum louder, and a non compus mentis. Now, what we have to do is prove that you tried to settle this amicably first. Have dinner with them. Dinner? Is that absolutely necessary, Dolly? Oh, it's the way things are done in the law, Irene. Dinner first, a non compus mentis later. Well, if it must be. Mr. Hackle, you and Mr. Tucker may take Miss Fay and myself to dinner. Delighted, Mrs. Malloy. Uh, and I speak for Barnaby as well. Uh, I believe there's a new restaurant in the railway station. Oh, uh, no, Mr. Hackle. If the Harmonia Gardens is good enough for your fashionable friends, it's good enough for us. We couldn't do that. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. It isn't the money or anything like that. It's the... It's the... It's the whale. It's the whale. No, Barnaby, it isn't the whale. It's the... It's the dancing. Oh, is it now? Oh, well, you see, they have dancing, contests, exhibitions, and I don't know how. It would take me weeks, months, years to learn how to... Mrs. Dolly Levi, 33 and a quarter year old chief clerk, taught how to dance. Now, it's quite simple, Mr. Hackle. You just put one arm there and one arm there. Oh, it's no use. I have absolutely no sense of rhythm. Absolutely no sense of rhythm is a primary requirement for learning to dance by the Gallagher-Levi method. Now, you give me five minutes of your time and I'll have you dancing through the streets of New York. We'll start with lesson number seven, the waltz kick turn. And a right foot touch and a left foot touch and a round kick and touch and oh, the heaven some girl is gonna find in your arms. I think perhaps we'd better start with lesson number one. <laughs> uh, put your hand on her waist and stand with her right in your left hand. And... Uh, no, 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 Mr. Hackle. You are going to take a step forward with that foot. All right. And... Forward, side, together, and forward, side, together, a one, two, three, four. Whoa, I'm dancing! Oh. Oh. Well, I was. Oh, of course you were, Mr. Hackle. Let's try again, shall we? There we are. Take the... Someone whose arms you're in Hold on to her tight and spin And a one, two, three, a one, two, three, a one, two, three Oh, I'm dancing! So you are, come here Turn around and turn around by right floating through the air Can't you be a little more aesthetic? 
Don't you think by dancing has a polish and a flair? Well, the word I think I'd use is athletic. <laughs> well, my heart is about to burst. My head is about to Pop. And now that I'm dancing, who cares if I ever stop? Oh, look, I, Cornelius Hackle, sport and dancing. Well done, Mr. Hackle. You're next, Mr. Tucker. Glide, and step, and then step, and glide. And everyone, stand aside. I think he's been holding out on us. Come here. You could do the poker if you worked a week or two. All the tango filled with passion seething. I might join the chorus of the Castle Garden Show. Well, whatever you do, keep breathing. For my heart is about to burst. My head is about to pop. And now that we're dancing, who cares if we ever stop?
Ephraim, let me go. I've been a widow long enough, Ephraim, and every evening for all these years, I've put out the cat, locked the door, made myself a little rum toddy, and thanked God that I was independent, that no one else's life was mixed up with mine. And then one night, an oak leaf fell out of my Bible. Oh, I put it there when you asked me to marry you, Ephraim. A perfectly good oak leaf, but without color, without life. And I suddenly realized that I was like that oak leaf, that for years I had not shed one tear, nor had I been filled with the wonderful hope that something or other would turn out well. And so, I have decided to rejoin the human race. Oh, and Ephraim, I want you to give me away. Before the parade passes by, I'm gonna get in step while there's still time left. Before the parade passes by Julius is taking us down to see the 14th Street Parade Everybody will be marching Oh, you're crying, Irene <sighs> Wonderful things. Come with us, darling. I will, Irene. I will. Before the passes by, I'm gonna go and taste Saturday's before the parade.
Mrs. Levi! Mm -mm. No horror, she's too young. Oh, Mrs. Levi. She's beautiful. Everything you said and more. Oh, Miss Mania. What? Here, you bring that back. I paid for her and I want all the parts. Mrs. Levi, what is the meaning of this? Oh, nothing to get upset about, Horace. A simple substitution. Miss Money was called away to an urgent business meeting at the Mint. It appears they were running a little short, so she went to help out. But she says she'll meet you at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant at 8 o'clock this evening. That's the most expensive restaurant in the city. Oh, and well, it should be. The finest food and the fastest waiters. Oh, by the way, Horace, I might be a little late, so Miss Money will meet you in front of the restaurant. She'll have on a, a buttercup yellow dress and baby pink shoes, and uh, she'll be singing an old-fashioned love song. Uh, a sweet rosy or oh, greedy. Oh, you couldn't miss her if you tried, Horace. All right, I'll be there. But only because I've already paid for the introduction and I want to get my money's worth. But from this moment on, Dolly Gallagher, you are hereby discharged as my marriage broker. From now on, you are just a woman. I am. Oh, oh. Ephraim, he's as good as mine. I'm gonna raise the roof, I'm gonna carry on. Give me a double trombone, give me a double trombone. It's on the parade. That's the at the lights of 14th Street these past four hours. But now perhaps you'd better call a hack or we won't get to the Harmonia Gardens on time. Oh, there's one. You... Oh, we couldn't do that. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not the money or anything like that. It, it's just that really elegant people, they never take hacks. Hacks is out. They all go by streetcar. J.P. Vanderbilt, Don and Jim Morgan. Then by all means, a streetcar. <gasps> you! But of course, if you really want to be elegant... We do! You walk. Yes, you yuck. It's Radius, Barnaby, and Cornelius. All the guests of Mr. Hackle are feeling great and look spectacular. What a neck there is to that acting like a born aristocrat. We got elegance if you ain't got elegance. You can never, ever carry it off.
Sandwich, 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 their money again isn't that just like the rich <laughs> well gentlemen aren't you gonna escort us in oh, by all means mrs. Malloy Barnaby Mrs. Malloy? Yes, Mr. Hackle? Mrs. Malloy? Before we go inside... Yes, Mr. Hackle? May I put my arm around your waist? Yes, Mr. Hackle. I've never felt a woman before. You haven't yet, Mr. Hackle. A corset is a corset. Cornelius, it's only a dollar thirty-five. I'll count it once more. No, don't. We can't afford it. I'm gonna order everything on the menu. Waiter! 
Physician. But that's enough of that, Doctor. But Mrs. Levi only ordered a chicken for two. Chicken? Chickens are dear. And Pate, my son, soup de jour and pomme souffle. Mm, why didn't you tell me this was an oriental establishment? We'll have two bowls of rice now. Get out. <clears throat> now, Miss Money, I understand you carry considerable amounts in your uh, belt. Reputation, Cornelius, but Minnie and I don't care who sees us tonight. Well, Minnie, what have you decided? Oh, I couldn't have anything to eat at these prices. I really couldn't. Oh, great rhinestones, what a sensible girl. Waiter, we'll have four glasses of beer, a loaf of yesterday's <laughs> bread, and some cheese. <laughs> Oh, Cornelius, now I know how you keep her from New York in stitches all the time. Minnie, have you ever eaten pheasant? Pheasant? <laughs> Not that I just felt a slight chill, that's all. Well, why did you say so? Here, I'll loan you this. Now, let me order something to hold us till the prize comes. Why I? Uh, would you bring a roast something pink with some chestnut oyster stuffing, cheese fondue, a half a dozen bread rolls, and a dozen, two saddles of lamb. Now, what do you Cornelius, but I'm sure the pheasants are fresh. We'll have four, please, and a nice red wine. Wait, no wine. No, no wine. wine? Champagne. 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 Oh, it's once in a lifetime, Barnaby. When we'll have champagne, Neapolitan ice cream, hothouse peaches, and Barnaby, 
Give the band leader a nickel and tell him to play to a wild rose. We want music while we die. The Vander Gelders do not dance, Miss Money. We're Presbyterian. All right, I'll dance myself. Give him two dollars for the baby, will you? And tell him to play something refined. I'm going to do the hoochie coochie. Woo! All right, Cornelius, I'll send for the band. But promise you won't order anything else. You wait here, Miss Money. I'll tell the band to play a nice waltz. and ask to play a nice waltz. What? Miss Money, oh Here's my. Here's a nickel for the band leader. Would you please send Two more peasants, please. Cornelius. My purse. My wallet. Hey, you, that's my purse. Excuse me, that's my wallet. I know it's mine because there's nothing in it but a dollar, three dimes, five pennies, and... Cornelius. Cornelius. Did he say two pheasants? Three, four, pheasants for the house. And never mind if you don't get to see the whale, I'll buy one of my own. How many times have I told you not to shout? Let me see our own gardens restaurant, not one of them. But sir, she's here for the lady. What? Are you sure? Like you told me, sir, here's that and those up from this time. Oh, yeah. 
Well, she always was artistic. <laughs> How about people who further down from front the dancer I particularly want Mr. Vanderbilt to see? <laughs> trouble with you, Dolly. Always wanting to know everything. Always putting your nose into everyone else's affairs. Anybody who married you would get as nervous as a cat. Horace Van der Gilder, what's that you say? I said anybody who married you Horace would get as... Horace Van der Gilder, get that idea out of your head this instant. Why, I'm surprised you even thought of such a thing. Understand, here and now I have no intention of marrying you. But I didn't mean that! Well, I certainly do hope not. You go your way, and I'll go mine. <laughs> Why, the very idea. I'm not some Irene Malloy you can woo with chocolate-coated peanuts, unshelled. <laughs> Mrs. Levi, you misunderstood me. Oh, I certainly do hope not. But if I had any intention of getting married again, it would certainly be to a more uh, pleasure-loving man than yourself. However, let's not go into that right now. Here come the waiters with our food. <laughs> uh, Rudy, I'll serve Mr. Van der Gelder. <laughs> some white meat, Horace. And some dumplings all lighter than air they are. And some giblets, very tender and very, very good for you. As I was saying, Horace, you go your way and I'll go mine. <laughs> That's right, Horace, you get stuck right in on the wine. It'll make you feel better. However, since you brought the subject up, there is one more thing I'd like to say. I didn't bring it up at all. Well, there's one more thing I'd like to say before we forget all about it. It is true that I am a woman who likes to know everything that's going on. A woman who likes to manage things, but I wouldn't like to manage anything as out of control as your household. You might do that yourself, God helping you. It is not out of control! Then we won't say another word about it. Here, Horace, have some beets. They're good. I don't like beets. Good. Oh. A quarrelsome friend or soul like yourself is no companion for me. You salt your beets, Horace, and I'll salt mine. Will you stop saying that? I won't say another thing. Good. Except this. At your age, you should want to know the honest truth. My age? My age? You're always talking about my age! Well, I don't know what your age is, Horace, but I do know this, that up in Yonkers, with bad food and bad temper, you're going to double it in six months' time. <laughs> Now, here, Horace, have some more beets. They're good. I don't like beets. I hate beets. Good, Horace. Now, you dig right in. Oh, the pity of it is that you could be a perfectly witty charming, amiable man if you wanted to be. I don't want to be charming! Oh, but you are, Horace. Look at you now. You can't hide it. Now sit down and we'll talk about something else. But before we change the subject, there is one more thing I'd like to say. Well, I don't want to hear it. And you're wasting your time, Dolly Levi. I am not going to ask you to marry me. Oh, I suppose you'd like me to ask you, Horace Van der Gelder. Well, I am very sorry I am turning you down. How can you turn me down when I haven't asked 
you anything. It's no good arguing with me, Horace. I have made up your mind. <laughs> now here, let me cut your wings. No, oh, I've got a headache. I'm going back to the hotel. Oh, you can't leave now. The poker contest's about to begin. Here's some money for the dinner. Here's twenty dollars. Wait a minute. There's nothing here except a dollar and three dimes, five pennies, and a button. This isn't my purse. I've lost my purse. Barnaby, oh. that purse you found. Yeah, impossible. I can't imagine you without a purse. It's Van der Gelder's. Cornelius, you better get out of here. What am I going to do? I've never been here before. They don't know me here. Stop eating that turkey. I can't pay for it. Oh, Horace, it's the latest thing in poker. And there's a dance I particularly want you to see. Rudy, come on, table. Further down front, that Mr. Van der Gelder might better observe his graceful oh. movements. Are you all charged with this 
disturbing the peace, assault and battery, inside and to riot, and several other equally serious violations of the laws of this city. Is there anyone here to plead in your behalf? I say, is there anyone here to plead in your behalf? Counselor law. Your Honor, policeman. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defense rests. Your Honor, I ask for the freedom for my clients and a verdict of guilty for the only real culprit, Horace and Guild of Yonkers, New York. <laughs> The one man guilty of these grievous charges of damage to private property. A girl with a dog! A waiter bruised! Waiter bruised! Waiter bruised! to a poor, unfortunate miner. <laughs> Would you mind repeating that, dear? <laughs> Begging your pardon, Mrs. Levi. But if it please the court, I have something to say. Mr. Hackle, I was just about to call you. You carry right on. <laughs> if you dare testify against me, You'll be discharged! But you've already done that, Mr. Van de Gilder. Well, I'll do it again. But you've done that too. And even if you hadn't, I'd still say what I have to say. Your Honor, I don't know much about disturbing the peace or inciting to riot. But I do know that what happened to me today is about the most important thing that could happen to a man and might never have happened if I'd obeyed your orders and stayed in Yonkers, New York. Your Honor, I'm talking about none other than love. You're telling me that after 33 and a quarter years, you've fallen in love because you took one evening off Oh, no, Mr. Van Gilder. I didn't fall in love with Mrs. Irene Malloy of this city in just an evening, even an hour. Oh, much less than that. What's less than a minute? A second! Oh, less than that. A moment. That's it. I'll go slowly so that you can take it all down. It on Takes a moment for your eyes to meet, and then your heart knows in a moment you will never be alone again. I There I sat, cooped up in Yonkers, for years and years. And all the time, wonderful people like Mrs. Malloy were wandering around the streets of New York. And I didn't know them at all. I don't know whether you can see from where you're sitting. Well, for instance, the way her eye and cheek and forehead come together. Here. Can you? 
I tell you, a fine woman is the greatest work of God above. Oh, you can talk all you like about Niagara Falls and the pyramids. They aren't in it at all. Of course, I've seen women before. But today, today I spoke to one, equal to equal. And they're so different from men. And awfully mysterious, too. I bet you could know a woman for a hundred years without really ever being sure whether she liked you or not. Today I've lost everything. My job, my future, everything that people feel is important. But I don't care. Even if I have to dig ditches for the rest of my life, I'll be a ditch digger who once had a wonderful day. Cause I'll be all dolled up and sing a 
them that song that says, you dog, I told you so. So wave your little hand and whisper so long, dearie, dearie, should have said so long, so long ago. Because you treated me so rotten and rough, I've had enough of feeling low. So wave your little hand and whisper so long, dearie, dearie, should have said so long, so long ago. Yes, I can hear that choo-choo calling me on to a fancy new address. I'm gonna learn to dance and drink and smoke a cigarette. I'm going as far away from Yonkers as a girl can get up to your cash register. It's a little lumpy, honey, but it rings. Cause I'll be all done up and singing that song that says, you dog, I told you so. So all you will find your life a sad old story when you see a dolly shuffle off to glory. Oh, I should have said... Woman on earth, never in a million years would I ever marry you. Oh no, I managed without you before, and I'm gonna manage without you now. No, Dolly, you go your way, and I'll go mine. And... Oh, Dolly, Dolly, Dolly! You stamped, Mr. Van what? Gelder. Oh, so it's you, is it, Mr. Hackle? Come crawling back, have you? Oh, no, Mr. Vandergilder. I've come back for my $146.35. You see, I've decided to go into business for myself. And seeing as the only business I know is hay and feed, I've decided to open my own store. And Cornelius has found the perfect location, Mr. Vandergilder, right across the street from you. So, you think you can compete with Vandergilders, do you? Well, just you try it! Aha. Uh -huh. Another one come crawling back. What do you want? My back salary for the past four months. Six dollars and twelve cents. No, no. You, you, you can't do this to me. Not any of you. I, I, I'll go to the courts. I, I'll, I'll get a lawyer. I'll... Why, Horace Vandergelder, as I live and breathe, if you don't look handsome in that outfit. <laughs> There are not many men who have the courage to wear tails at 11.30 in the morning. <laughs> no, I just dropped by to return your cane and say I was sorry about Ernestina, but I have found the ideal wife for you. But you were doing something. Don't let me interrupt you. What were you doing? Getting Cornelius's money, Dolly. One hundred and forty-six dollars. And thirty-five cents. Plus six dollars and twelve cents a month. And the money my mama left me. Fixed you dollars and... 48 cents. 38 cents. 48. All right, all right. If it's the money you want, the safe's in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, come on, Cornelius. Hurry, Barnaby. Money, money, money. 
money, 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 Mr. Van der Gelder's money. It's like the sun we walk under. It can either kill or cure. Mr. Van der Gelder never gets tired of saying that most of the people in this world are fools. And maybe he's right, isn't he? Himself? Cornelius? Myself? Yes, we're all fools and we're all in danger of destroying the world by our folly. <laughs> but the surest way to keep us from harm is to give us four, maybe five human pleasures that are our right in this world. But this takes a little money. Now, the difference between a little bit of money and no money at all is enormous. And this can shatter the world. And the difference between a little bit of money and an enormous amount of money is very slight. And this can also shatter the world. It's all in how you use it. Oh, as my late husband Ephraim Levi always used to say, money, uh, pardon the expression, is like manure. It's not worth a thing unless it's spread around encouraging young things to grow. <laughs> Anyway, that is the opinion of the future Mrs. Horace Van der Gelder. Oh, and Ephraim, I'm ready for that sign now. Hmm? Oh, don't just stand here. That goes in there. Bossy, scheming, meddling, irritating, inquisitive, exasperating. Oh, Horace, I have found the ideal wife for you. Dolly Gallagher. I don't want you to find me no ideal wife. If I want an ideal wife, I'll find one of my own, and I found her, and it's you, damn it! Why, Hans? Oh, I know I've been a fool about Mrs. Malloy and that other woman, but... Dolly, forgive me and marry me. Oh, now hold it right there, Horace. What do you mean? Well, you know very well that you are the first citizen of Yonkers. And as the first citizen of Yonkers, your wife has to be a, a somebody. Am I a somebody? You are a wonderful woman. Oh, you're just partial. It won't be enough to load your wife with money and jewels and make her a benefactress to half the town. Oh, by the way, it's very bad business to allow Cornelius to open a store across the way from you. Take him in. Make him a partner. Partner? Then Barnaby can have Cornelius' his old job. Now, hold on, and this darling. this way we can all be together to dance at Ermengarde's wedding. No, that doesn't. This time you've gone too far, Dolly. I ain't dancing at no weddings. Besides, I don't know how. And it would take me weeks, months, years to learn. All right, I'll dance. That front room, idiot, won't go on. Get on with it. What are you waiting for? Yes, stand together. What is going on in there? Oh, nothing. I'm just having that front room done over in blue wallpaper. Horace? I know the old paper ain't worn yet, but that fella's just set up in business and needs a good start. And you see, Dolly, I've always felt that money... If you'll pardon the expression, it's like manure. It's not worth a thing unless it's spread around encouraging young things to grow. Oh, thank you, Ephraim. Hello, Dolly. Well, hello. It's so nice to have you here Where you belong I never knew, Dolly Without you, Dolly Life was awfully flat before Oh, you are. 
Yeah.